So how are you doing? How's your family doing? Uh, we're all one family. We're God's family. We're a parish family, and we're all uh, in this uh, together. I, I just want to give a, maybe a personal reflection about where I'm at and, and, and uh, just some suggestions that hopefully will, will help you and your family uh, as we uh, ride this out, as we stay close to home, uh, as we try to uh, really care about each other and love each other and reach out uh, to, uh, to one another. Uh, let me begin by saying in St. John's Gospel, there are many levels of meaning, and anytime you uh, have a blind person in John's Gospel, he's talking about faith. And so uh, this blind man is going to receive faith. He's going to see with the eyes of faith. And the more sight he gets, the, uh, some of the Pharisees who, who are opposing Jesus uh, they're becoming blind while he is able to see. It's a real contrast that uh, John is making. He loves to work with light and darkness. He loves that. Uh, so the eyes of faith, uh, how, how has my faith changed over this past week? Uh, uh, how, how do I pray that, that all of us, that our eyes of faith will be, will be opened? Uh, because it's a gradual process. Notice in the Gospel that he, he sees more and more and more who Jesus is. He's not just a prophet. He is the Son of God. Uh, and all I know is I was blind and now I can see. A marvelous, uh, marvelous line. All right. It seems to me that most of us grew up uh, in the United States at a wonderful time. Right after World War II, uh, the American dollar was king. Uh, and, and we were the ones who were on top of the world, so to speak, as far as uh, the economy went, uh, as far as opportunities. Look at the opportunities that we had growing up that our parents and grandparents did not have. And so I just kind of think that I took that for granted uh, and, and just said, well, this is the way life is supposed to be. Uh, but actually, uh, we're the first generation that has lived like this in the history of the human race. We're, we're the first ones that have just always thought that uh, the best was yet to come, and the bigger, uh, the better, and then you know, we can just build this and build that, knock this down, and that's progress. Uh, and that the, the future would always give, be more and more and more. We could consume more and more. We could travel more and more. We could have more and more. And we could pretty well do what we want. You know, what do I want to do? These were the questions that, uh, that we, we grew up with. That's just a caricature, just a caricature. But in my own family, uh, this has not been the case. Uh, in fact, I want to speak to you about my uh, grandfather. And I have some pictures here. I, show, I hope that they'll, they'll show up on the, on the screen. Uh, this, this, uh, this is my grandfather here, George Henry Cole. And he has a brother Clark and a brother Arthur. These are when they are fairly little, fairly young. And then here's another picture, the same three brothers all together. And here's my grandfather with the bow tie. Isn't he handsome? Don't you think I look just like him? Huh? Yeah, there he is. That's my grandfather. No, I never knew him. Why did I never know my grandfather? Because my grandfather was one of the victims of the 1918 Spanish flu. And at that time, a quarter of the world's population got that flu and Millions of people all over the world did, did uh, succumb to it, and, and, and my grandfather was, was one of them. And just the stories that when, when he died, there would be a cart coming down the street, and they would take the bodies out of the house uh, to be, be buried. And I don't think he ever got a funeral. And, and when, when I was ordained a priest, the first thing I did was offer a mass for my grandfather so he would at least have 
a Christian mass, a Christian, uh, a Christian uh, burial. So what I'm saying is that we have forgotten. That was just over 100 years ago, 1918. We have forgotten our history, that, that these things have happened, uh, have happened before. And so what, what is giving me the eyes of faith is to, to uh, get out of this idea that we can do whatever we want and the sky's the limit, that we're, we're here on this earth for a certain amount of years. My grandfather was 39 years old, left a wife and four little kids. Uh, 39 years old. And, and yet he was a good husband and, and a good father, but his time here was, was brief. And so what it's helping me to do is to focus on the big picture. Yes, we're here on earth, and we ought to take this life seriously and do all we can to live the the attitudes and the works of mercy, but we have to have our eyes fixed on heaven, have our eyes fixed on resurrection, because all these people who've gone before us uh, are still with us in the communion of saints, the communion of saints. So it's really helped me, and I'm hoping it will ha help as we go through this, to keep my eyes fixed on the risen Christ, on Jesus, and not to cling to this world, not to cling to it, but actually to look forward to, to heaven, to look forward to meeting all these people who have gone before us. Now, I had some bucket lists. I don't know if you have some bucket lists. But one of my bucket list items was I would have loved to have spent a month in the city of Assisi, where St. Francis came from. I visited there. I could live there. Beautiful. And my, my dream was that I would spend a month in Assisi living with the Sisters of the Atonement and saying Mass each day in English and then just walking the streets where St. Francis walked and going into the different churches and chapels and just spending... So that's not going to happen right now. But cannot being right here in the rectory cannot, cannot not be in Assisi. Can I not make that a spiritual journey uh, just, just as well? Also, uh, what I've always wanted to do was to have the St. Ignatius 30-day retreat. St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, I never had the luxury of 30 days where I could experience his spiritual exercises. I think we do now. And so this is what I'm going to do at the house, at the rectory, to follow each day for 30 days St. Ignatius's uh, retreat. It's a transforming retreat. Also, I recommend to you, we passed out some of these, uh, Father Gately's 33 Days to Greater Glory, a total consecration to the Father through Jesus based on the Gospel of St. John. Father Gately, anything that he has usually goes for 33 days. So that's something that you could do at home uh, as well. Also, uh, Pope Francis has encouraged us to pray the rosary, to pray it as a family, and then you can also follow the Mass on television. You can follow it on the website. Uh, we're going to have different Masses here available to you. Deacon Rick will tell you more about that. But those are just some reflections, folks. I'm hoping that I will be a better priest, a better pastor after all of this is over, and we've already got the best congregation in the world, so we're even going to be better. I'm just going to ask Deacon Rick to, sh to speak to you a few about some of the opportunities that we have through the website.